Why is America a monster factory? <laughs> um, do you know anything at all about uh, some of the notorious criminals and politicians and different people that we've had here in America? America has produced some real monsters. Give you a couple names here you can think about. Charles Manson, probably one of the most well-known of the serial killers. And uh, kind of funny, had, you know, tattooed a swastika right in his forehead trying to make it the mark of the beast or something. It's not the mark of the beast, but you know, guy was a dippy nut and whatever else, messing around with drugs and, and uh, mind control and whatever else. But I remember him saying the one time, he said, you know, he said back years ago, he said it, it really meant something to be crazy. He said, now everybody's crazy. <laughs> he was right on that. A lot of people nowadays act like they're insane. But back in his day, it was, you know, kind of a unique thing to be crazy in the head. Uh, how about Anton LaVey? Talked about him in one of my studies. The founder of the Church of Satan, a charismatic uh, organ player, and then he'd play music at the uh, strip shows and whatever else, and he'd see a lot of the same people coming from the charismatic churches to the strip shows, you know, at the circuses and things that he would play at. Um, and so he just came out with this whole Satanism, the carnival-type Satanism and whatever else. And he had a disciple, one of his disciples, who actually wanted to be more of a serious Satanist. And that guy's name was Colonel Michael Aquino. And uh, the Temple of Set founder. And that guy was a real sick ticket, I'll tell you what. Um, the military knew that he was a Satanist, and they kept him on. And said, oh, you know, he was part of the psychological warfare um, unit or something like this. I mean, that's, that's good. When you have the military being okay with a guy who's a known Satanist, and um, pedophile and whatever else, and the military employs him. Real good. Good country there that we have. Uh, how about Sam Berkowitz? The, the, what is it, the son of Sam killers and things? There's a whole other, you know, series of uh, weird, you know, murders and things that he did. Ted Bundy, the guy that uh, was stiffed by some uh, young woman that he was in love with. And she had long, kind of straight hair, and it was parted in the middle. And um, kind of a popular thing back, I guess it was in the 70s, I think, when he was around. Doing all, of his, all that he did, and she rejected him because he wasn't wealthy enough. And so he um, worked his way up through the ranks of the corporate world and got into politics and whatever else. And eventually he was wealthy enough that she noticed him, and she said, Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll date you now and whatever. And he just said... No, I don't think so, you know, and ha 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 and walked away. But he had this anger towards any girl that had long straight hair, any white girl with long straight hair, and parted in the middle. And he would murder them, strangle them, and then he would hide the dead bodies, and he'd come back and uh, perform necrophilia on the body. Fornication with a dead body, if you don't know what that means. Ted Bundy. Um... Another famous serial killer, another famous monster, American monster. How about Edward Gein, another uh, weirdo from down south, and and uh, he was kind of a, just a really odd individual and things, and kind of a loner and whatnot. And uh, some older woman in the area had disappeared, and they didn't know where she was at. And I guess some guys that knew Ed, they said to him, you know, hey, do you know anything about her? where old Mrs. So-and-so is at. He said, yeah, he said, I killed her. She's over at my place. And they said, oh, come on, Ed, that's not funny. And he just laughed. And, oh. and they found out, no, actually, he wasn't uh, joking. He did actually kill her. And uh, this guy, he actually skinned this older woman. I think he might have, I don't remember if he killed others as well. I think he did. I think he killed a few. But um, he had skinned this older woman, and then he would actually wear her skin and her face over his. Yeah, okay, completely normal. Huh. How about Al Capone, the infamous gangster that would run all kinds of ads and whatever else and try to you know, give money to certain people and things, but the guy was just a bloody killer. Hmm, Roman Catholic too, I might add. Interesting. How about Richard Kuklinski, another Roman Catholic involved with the Mafia? The Iceman, this infamous Iceman. Iceman. And um, he got the name Iceman because he would kill people and then he'd stick them in a chest freezer for a number of months till you know, people were no longer looking for them. They just gave up looking. They didn't know where he was, you know, they, he was at. 
and then he would take the guy out, he'd take the frozen body out someplace out here like this or something out in the countryside and he'd dump the frozen body. And then the body would thaw out and then the, somebody would find it and they'd say, huh, you know, look at this. And here the one time they actually found one of these bodies and it hadn't thawed out yet. And it was in the summer and they said, hmm. And um, one thing led to another and he eventually got captured and went to death row and, and whatever. And um, he laughed about things and the way he killed people and slowly killed a guy and I, I videotaped this guy dying slowly because my clients wanted it that way. I mean, sick individual. Roman Catholic. Member of the Roman Catholic Church. Hmm. You say it's all about Catholicism? No, not entirely. How about uh, Sidney Gottlieb of Project MK Ultra? They came up with the thing of using LSD to uh, get people into states of suggestion and then they would use different types of mind control, torture, and other things to see what how they could fragment people's minds and then get them into an altered personality. And when they're not that altered personality, then they can uh, train, it, train them to be an assassin and whatever else. And, and um, then the person could be put into that altered state, do a job of an assassin, and then taken out of the altered state, and then they would go on about their life. You know, the, they called it the Manchurian candidate. And, um, and they declassified that, that was real. And Sidney Gottlieb was one of the scientists that was involved in it. Another monster. And um, how about Lon Horiuchi? So I'm not just going to kick, kick the uh, serial killers. I'll kick some of the government goons as well. Lon Horiuchi that was there at the Waco situation. And he was killing some of the people. Some of the Branch Davidians. Uh, with the mind-controlled guy there. Uh, David Koresh. That thought that he was Jesus Christ. He thought that he was the Lamb of God that was worthy to open the seals. <laughs> and he got a revelation from God that all the members of his church were supposed to, the men were supposed to give their wives to David Koresh to raise up a holy seed. And a lot of the men left and some stayed and actually went along with what he was saying. Um, another monster. But uh, Lon Horiuchi was out there, a government sniper, and he uh, was killing Branch Davidians. And then he ended up going to uh, Ruby Ridge, where he killed um, Vicki Weaver and Sam Harris. I think he shot through him and whatever else. So, um, as far as I know, I don't think he was ever charged for any of that stuff. Hmm, another monster. How about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer? There's a famous one. Jeffrey Dahmer, the guy that was a church-going, professing Christian. And he was a sodomite, and he would go and he would... Um, take his victims home and he would get them on drugs and whatever else and then he would kill them and he was doing all kinds of experiments on them uh, cutting them up into pieces and and um, eating parts of them and whatever he was practicing cannibalism and sick individual and um, ended up getting, finally getting caught went to prison and one of the victims a young black man he had a sister and that sister was saved and she went in to visit Jeff Dahmer and she said, Jeff, you need to get saved. You're a sinner. God can save you. And Jeff started to ask some questions and then there was a chaplain that would come in and talk to him and um, people would bring him materials about creation science and Jeff realized that evolution was not true. More on that here in a minute. And, um, you know, you can watch the video testimonies about Jeffrey Dahmer and I read the book from the chaplain that was actually there meeting with Jeff and I think he actually got saved before he died in prison, before he was killed by another, by a murderer in prison. And um, so you can watch my studies on that. And, uh, but it's another interesting story there, another monster. And uh, Charlie Roberts was another white man that went to church. And, um, and he was down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And there was an Amish schoolhouse over in Nickel Mines, uh, not far from... I mean, I literally used to ride my bicycle. There was a nickel mine store there many years ago, and I would ride my bicycle over there. We go on a, we called it a bike hike. Me and some of my friends, we'd ride our bicycles over, and we'd buy candy or you know, so, soda pop or something like that. And we went right past the school there. There was a there was an old mine, nickel mine that had filled in with water, and and there was a swimming pool there we would go to in the summertime. And right across the road there was an Amish schoolhouse, and Charlie Roberts went in there one day intending to sexually 
rape and molest all the little Amish girls and it didn't work out for him and it didn't work out for the little girls unfortunately because he saw the police coming realized that he wasn't going to be able to do his dastardly deed and um, ended up killing the whole schoolhouse of little girls and they got rid of the schoolhouse and everything else just a horrible terrible tragedy I was still in Lancaster County when it happened couldn't believe it um, but you know right in the in my own backyard and he was a milk truck driver too by the way so he'd go around to these farms and see these little girls and he, he was a pervert but he went to church hmm how about John and Alan Dulles the Dulles brothers involved with the CIA I think they were both heads of the CIA at one time or another and all the devilment that they did and and uh, I forget which one was in when Kennedy was assassinated but they orchestrated the whole thing and now you have you know I think what is it Dulles International Airport or something like that named after one of those sick monsters <laughs> we name air airports after our monsters yeah how about John D Rockefeller Standard Oil and you know his buddies like JP Morgan and um, you know some of the others but jo John D Rockefeller uh, very evil businessman how about Paul Warburg the uh, papal youth in there a Jew working for the Pope one of the creators of the Federal Reserve system and Max Warburg his brother who was uh, giving money to Adolf Hitler there's a document out there it's photocopy of it in Fourth Reich of the Rich, the book Fourth Reich of the Rich, and it shows Hitler's signature here and Max Warburg down below. So you have, you say, whoa, wait a second here. You mean to tell me that there were wealthy Jews in America that were financing Adolf Hitler? Uh-huh. Um, study history and just even read the Bible. Sometimes the biggest killer of the Jews in the Old Testament were other Jews. Look at the wars between Israel and Judah. So you get these Jews that mingled with white people from Europe and they go in onto these high level powerful Illuminati type positions. They like to kill lower down Jews that haven't mingled. That's a historical fact. That's no prejudice or racist or whatever. Well, it's racist on their part, but not on mine for telling the truth. But um, how about Charles Darwin? Talked about evolution earlier. How about old Charlie Darwin there? This uh, founder of evolution theory. The guy that wrote Origin of the Species and the, was it Preservation of the Favored Races or something like that? Um, yeah, Charles Darwin was a rather sick individual. Hey, I'm going to come up with a philosophy that says that uh, cert certain races have evolved further than other races. And that we have to eliminate weaker species so that the stronger species can survive and thrive. And uh, it's one of the philosophies of Nazi Germany that they had. Yeah. Oh, well, he's not a he's not a monster. He's a hero. We can name universities after him, or maybe not a university, but some kind of university hall or a library, or you know, we'll name things after him too because he's a good monster. We love his theory that says all this stuff around you, all these plants, all these uh, flowers and things that you're seeing behind me here. This is all just came about as a random chance. It's all just by accident. There is no God. And you can just do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. You know, um, Aleister Crowley talked about him in the uh, video I did about is the pride movement of just a front for Satanism. It is. But um, again, hey, Charles Darwin, good guy. How about Anthony Fauci? Where would we be without Fauci? Our good friend Fauci. That uh, scared the whole world into believing things that were anti-science. And then got people to take experimental drugs that hadn't been properly tested. But that's, he's okay. He's a good guy. He's a good man. You know, Fauci. He was a wonderful doctor. Uh-huh. And um, there's one more I'll mention here before I get to some scripture. And that's uh, Bonnie and Clyde Barrow. Uh, I don't think her last name was Barrow. I don't think she took his name, but um, Bonnie and Clyde, the infamous gangsters. And you could get into Bugsy Siegel, and you could get into all these, all these monsters. Um, I don't study all the lives of all of them, but I've studied some of them. And um, 
it amazes me uh, just how many of these people are in America. Just crazy. Show you some really beautiful flowers here. If you can see these little ones down here, it's, the sun's kind of a little bright right now. Let me go down this way. But um, I take joy in the flowers and the creation, the flora and fauna that God has created. As you can see, it's called a spotted touch me not. Oops, I just did. I touched it again. Oh, touch me not. Yes, I did. <laughs> Little joke there. These are the clotheslines we use. But, um, why? Why is the question. Why has America produced so many monsters? What is the formula there? Well, let me get my Bible out. A very good reason for it. We'll go to the book of Luke. Um, chapter 12. I'll read you from the scriptures what Jesus Christ has to say about the condition of this world. Luke chapter 12, let me see what verse it was. 45 through 48. Luke chapter 12, verse 45. The Lord's talking about different servants here. But if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and the maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. Uh, a lot of people do that. Oh, the Lord's not coming back. They, they've gotten away, from the, gotten away from the thing of believing in the Jesus Christ coming back. He's delaying his coming. Uh, maybe there isn't a God, and you get into all this atheism and everything else, like America has, because of evolution philosophy. I don't even know if there is a God. Maybe it all just came about as, as a random chance. Everything out here is just a random chance, a slow process of billions of years of death. <laughs> Good philosophy to have. Verse 46, The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant... which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Verse 48, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Now here it is. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall, uh, shall be much required. And that's the point of the video. Why has America produced so many monsters? Because Americans have been given so much. We had God's book, the greatest Bible that ever has been printed. Oh no, they used the uh, Geneva Bible early on. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. You might've had some Puritans that were a little bit stuck in their ways because they're Calvinists, you know, and whatever, and they would use the Geneva Bible, but this is the book. The King James Bible is the book that was used here by the early Americans that settled this country. Um, and I'll be proving that in an upcoming video, the thing of Geneva Bible versus King James Bible. We had God's book, and we were a God-fearing, Bible-believing people. Even the Enlightenment people, the you know Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and you know probably George Washington and some of these other guys, even them, they still use this book. Thomas Jefferson, you know, tried to rewrite it and whatever else, but. The point I'm trying to make is they respected people that held to the book. They understood, you know, that we're not going to have an atheistic system here. We're going to have a system where we believe and we teach things like religious liberty. That's what this nation was founded on. And we got away from that. And the prosperity that America experienced because of those early Bible-believing, God-fearing people, that prosperity led to good times. And good times led to apathy. And all of a sudden you start to have people that are just, life is too easy for them. And you have all the conveniences and all the nice things and, and all the stuff. And they just sit around saying, what do we do? I'm kind of a little bit bored. Hmm. Maybe we should come up with some kind of a weird philosophy or something. And they start to come up with weird philosophies. And you start to teach people in school, children, hey, you know what? You came from nothing, accidentally, at some unknown time in the past, and you slowly evolved from goo up to an animal, and you're just a wise animal. That's all that you are. 
So going out into the world and act like an animal. There is no God. All is well. There is no hell. Um, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's why America produced monsters. And I realize there are other monsters in other countries as well. But, you know, you would think that uh, a nation that started out so good that it would kind of continue on and be a great nation. Um, but it got messed up because of that very philosophy, that very foolish philosophy of evolution that led to a thing of just doing whatever you want and life became so easy. Um, I'm raising my son out here, out in the country. I was born and raised in the country myself. I had chores. We had things to do. I wasn't just allowed to sit around idly and, and uh, hey, you know what, just go hang out with your friends. You want to go have fun? Go have fun, man. It's all just about fun. Um, when you have young people that don't have chores and young people that have no purpose or meaning, uh, they turn out to be monsters a lot of times, unless the, by the grace of God, he steps in and, and stops them from becoming monsters. But I've seen it. And a lot of young people, they get into this thing of, you know, what do I do? And I just sit around at my parents' place and whatever. And uh, You need to have a job. Okay, and uh, I worked, I started working at jobs when I was 14 years old, 14, and um, had a full-time job in the summer months, and I worked at the same place up until I graduated high school, and after that I had different jobs, and, and uh, I worked very hard over the years, and it was many years later that I got into ministry, uh, many years later, so you know, young, young people out there don't say, well, you know, Brother Brian's this, and he doesn't, you know, have a job outside of the home and whatever. Uh, what do you think I do here? <laughs> um, if you didn't notice that when I was back in the woods over that way, there was a bunch of wooden kind of empty racks. Those are our firewood racks. We just hauled those back this morning. And uh, right there, if you can see the spot right over here where it's kind of some bare dirt and some things around. Get off of me there, ant. That's where it came from. And we hauled it back there this morning and it was a lot of work, very hard, a lot of lifting. And again, it's before breakfast. I haven't had any, even had anything to eat yet. We have to head to the office. I'm just recording this video quickly. Um, you should have hard things in your life because when you don't, when you don't have to suffer and you don't have to say, you know, get up early in the morning and go to bed early at night and you get up and you work and you're sweating and whatever else, um, you can get your flesh to the point where it's raised up and you start to get really evil. Um, that's why I recommend uh, working hard in life. I recommend that. It's very important. And I'll tell you right now, if you think it's uh, just a thing of, oh, I just, I can't move out there, or you start making excuses and whatever else, um, anybody can get away from the city. Anyone. It takes work. You have to suffer. You know, like living without running water, living without electricity. Uh, say, I'm going to work really hard at some job and save up and get a car or a van or something, and I'll live in that for a while. There are so many videos out there. You know, it, it, it brings me to shame to see so many lost people, particularly new agers, and they're living debt-free, better lives, and they struggle and they suffer. And I see Christians that just sit around complaining. And I'm saying well, well-abled, well-bodied Christians. Okay, I'm not talking if you're in a wheelchair or something like that, or if you're disabled or something. Yeah, I get it. Okay, you can't go out and do things. I understand. Don't write it in the comments. Well, you don't understand, Brother Brian. You don't need to say that stuff. I'm talking about young people. I'm talking about able-bodied people. And yet you just stay there and, well, I just, yeah, I can't. I'll, I'll just, you know, I was raised here and I'll die here and whatever else. Very foolish, very foolish. Suffering uh, is one of the best things for you. You know, right now you can see these, all this fireweed out here. You see all the little bees flying around and everything else? Necessary for life. That's why I don't mow everything in sight around my properties. I want the plants to come up. I want there to be bees in the area because they pollinate the flowers and they make it healthier. But you know what, they have to work. They're working hard. We're out front later, or earlier on, out by the border of our property and the north border, and the squirrels are up in the 
spruce trees and they're knocking the cones down. Up there, fir trees and spruce trees and they're knocking the cones down to the ground. Why is that? Dry out the cones, get the seeds out, store up for winter. Everything out here has something to do. That's how God intended it to be. Um, and I can't be your, you know, hold your hand and take you through all this stuff. Uh, if you really want to get away from the city and, and uh, from the bad things, I know some of you do. I hear from you. I just want to encourage you and challenge you at the same time. Um, America has a long history of producing monsters because people have it just too easy. Learn how to suffer. Uh, go out and use a outhouse. Uh, go for a while without being able to take a shower. Learn how to take a shower with a, a stand-up shower or whatever with a washcloth and a little jug of water or something like that. <laughs> um, suffer. Suffer. It'll make you much better. And you know what, Christian? If you don't suffer, you aren't going to reign with Jesus Christ. So suffering is not a bad thing. You think suffer being bad and, and whatever. No. Now excessive suffering, yeah, you know, whatever. You can make the arguments, but... Um, do something hard with your life. Make some hard decisions. Right? And don't come here, by the way, and say, well, Brother Brian's got plenty of land and whatever. He'll let us have some. No, no I won't. Uh, we've worked hard to get to where we're at. We have suffered. This property literally has my blood. Blood, sweat, and tears on this property. Um, and once you get out and you start doing things, you'll understand exactly what I mean by that. There will be times that you'll cut yourself really badly and you'll, when you're working, doing things and and you will bleed and you will sweat and sweat and sweat some more. And there will be times that uh, you'll shed tears because of different things that happen in your life. But you know what? I wouldn't trade any of it for living in town and having everything provided for me. I think that would be a terrible existence. might even turn me into a monster. <laughs> so hopefully I've challenged you on that video. And I thank you very much for watching.